Pittsburgh, all right. Hi, everybody. Wow, beautiful room. My name is Marika Hecht. Uh, I am a graduate student at the University of Pittsburgh. I am, I'm hopefully finishing my PhD this spring in learning sciences, so I'm gonna carry all your positive energy with me. Um, I am actually trained as a botanist and a naturalist. Um, I did environmental education for years. Um, so part of what I've been thinking about a lot since I've delved into this educational research is the ways in which we might uh, think about how we adaptively manage biological ecosystems and how that could uh, really inform the way we think about learning ecosystems. Uh, right now, I see a lot of people talking about learning ecosystems like this. The learner's at the center. This idea is like the learner's surrounded by relationships and policy and environments, but what's really at the center of learning? So I spent the summer actually in the field with teenagers outside, which is exactly where I like to be. Um, and it got me thinking, what's at the center here? Is it the young man who's hoping to touch a daddy long legs for the first time? Is it the educator who's passing him the daddy long legs? Is it actually the daddy long legs itself? <laughs> See, in an ecosystem, there is no center. Restoration ecologists think about assemblages over individuals. They think about relational processes over simple subject-object interconnectedness. So these seem like two big insights that we could carry into how we think about learning ecosystems. Uh, take these trees. These are aspens in Utah. It looks like a bunch of individual trees. This is actually 47,000 trees all connected by a single root system covering 107 acres. There are no individuals here. And even this huge organism cannot thrive without these tiny fungi, these microscopic fungi called mycorrhizae that actually move nutrients and water from soil to roots. So are there even individual species? What about humans? Are we actually separate from the hundreds of microbes that live in our guts? Are all of us in this room separate from one another? Are there any individuals here? We can't survive apart from all the entangled elements of an ecosystem. This is more than just a bunch of connected parts, right? There's a flow of nutrients, water, energy that are in constant flux throughout an ecosystem. So now you may be thinking, well, that's fine. Those are natural systems, but I study learning. I care about kids. I've got to center them because we don't want to lose individuals in dysfunctional systems. But what happens when we're centering youth? How does that shape the way that we think about uh, equity, for example? So here, we're imagining youth moving through the system, and then we pose the problem as, OK, do youth have access to the same opportunities? But I think when we focus on those individuals, we're actually undermining the potency of the learning ecosystem frame. We're actually we're losing the forest for the trees. So what would happen if we rethought how we design and conceptualize learning ecosystems, bringing in these ideas from the adaptive management of biological systems? So here, restoration ecologists use indicators like the mayfly. They use this to measure the health of the system but they don't design stream restoration projects specifically for mayfly habitat. They look beyond the mayfly to what's influencing the mayfly habitat. Things like beavers, which are keystones. They drive energy flows through the system. And very importantly, they're always focused on localizing their efforts. They might adapt ideas from other locations, but they never use straight replication. They bring in uh, ideas about resources and how those are influencing things, but they're also designing thinking about natural disturbances like flooding. So we know these things are inevitable. We're always going to have floods. How can we design a system that can actually thrive and be resilient in the face of this kind of disturbance? So what if we thought about youth as our indicators? Their learning is definitely a great measure of ecosystem health. But what if we designed our interventions around keystones like educators? And what if we always designed with uh, variation and local context rather than replication? And what if we embrace natural disturbances? We know changes in funding, changes in policy, they're always coming down the line. So how do we create systems that don't just withstand that impact, but actually thrive in the face of it? So just like the Aspens, there is no individual learning. We all uh, are, are 
intimately connected. And when we focus on individual access, we lose sight of the power of that learning ecosystem metaphor. If we want to focus on the ecosystem, we have to decenter children and youth. Why not create structures that support a holistic learning ecosystem, like support systems for out of school educators as pathway brokers, which is something we've heard about here today? Um, so, just like the Aspen and the Mycorrhizae, uh, youth educators place, we thrive and fail together. Let's decenter youth and think about the ecosystem overall. Thank you. <laughs>